Good morning. Welcome to worship here at First Presbyterian Church of Easton. We come to you from the beautiful sanctuary. Um, I want to begin just uh, to mention that unfortunately Elizabeth will not be here singing today. Um, she wasn't feeling well this morning and is taking care of herself and we, we want her to do that. So we look forward to having her back with us and her voice leading us um, on Sundays to come. Other announcements uh, that I have this morning, um, we are scheduled, we will continue to um, have our um, hybrid worship. Uh, as we are here, we have space for you. If you are someone at home and would like to come in, we are updating our policies um, on, on a regular basis. Session meets this week, so they'll be looking at our worship schedules again, as always, um, trying to keep up with uh, what, what we need to be doing to be able to gather and to do so safely and uh, to glorify God. So please join us. We are also having our congregational meeting. It is the time of year um, when we elect officers, deacons, and elders. I hope if you have been approached, approached by our nominating team that you are prayerfully um, deciding whether or not you are saying yes to the call to be nominated as an officer, um, as a deacon or elder. And we will attempt to have a, uh, a hybrid congregational meeting so you are welcome to come in person, but we will also have a Zoom component so that folks can also be um, socially distanced and in their homes. And uh, more details about that will, will come. So that will be another first that we experience this year. Uh, our, our joy has been that we have slowly been having uh, meetings of folks. Um, our personnel team met, our mission team met recently, so we're slowly starting to come back and have our, our group meetings here. If you uh, are connected with a congregation and would like to have a small group gathering, please let us know. We'd be happy to schedule it. And um, we are also experimenting with ways to connect with the community. Uh, to reach out beyond our doors, and uh, we're having a Pet Lovers of Easton Facebook group. Uh, this is just a, 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 an easy way for us to connect with people over an issue that is fun and lighthearted, and that means a lot to some of us. So um, if you are somebody who loves your pets and would like to show pictures and chat with other members of our church about your pets, this could be the group for you. So look for us on Facebook. Um, our Pentecost offering is, and yes, so those are our announcements for today. And um, I will mention as we move into our worship, a, a prayer announcement. Uh, the congregation is very uh, sad that Nancy Wilson has passed. Nancy was again one of our, our longtime members, over 75 years. Um, and uh, pancreatic cancer moved swiftly, and we uh, just hold her three children and her family in our prayers. Uh, there looks like there will be a service this coming Saturday. They will, the family will share details as they do want our congregation um, to, to join in that time of celebration. Um, Bud Wilson uh, is in Saucon Manor um, in Hellertown and is doing well, and that is a small a small comfort during this time. So our prayers are with them. Of course, when we come to worship, we bring all our joys, our sorrows, all that we are to our time of worship. And thus, this is what we do now, come before God. So I invite you to join your voices with mine. If you will read the words in bold, together we will hear God's call to us to worship today. This new day is fresh with possibilities to encounter the living Christ. With bright eyes, let us search. This new day is fresh with possibilities to understand the living Christ. With engaged minds, let us ponder. This new day is fresh with possibilities to be moved by the living Christ. With compassionate hearts, let us feel. 
This new day is fresh with possibilities to respond to the living Christ. With solid devotion, let us follow. This new day is fresh with possibilities to serve the living Christ. With humble intention, let us act. This new day is fresh with possibilities to praise the living Christ. With open hearts, let us worship. Trusting in God's grace and mercy, we come to God now in prayer, and I invite you to join your voices and your hearts with mine in this morning's prayer of confession. Living, loving God, as we watch growth in our gardens and in the children around us, we confess we often resist growth and change as we grow older. We form ideas and opinions about many things and cling to them. We think we already know what you desire from us and fear new insights and new directions. Forgive us for thinking we already know it all. Forgive us for blocking out the concerns and commitments of those who differ with us. Open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts to signs of new life. Grant us faith like a mustard seed, so small and insignificant on its own, yet able to grow with your blessing to become a mighty sign of your lively kingdom among us. Amen. Brothers and sisters, siblings in Christ, believe the good news. You have been forgiven. Thanks be to God.
morning. Today's scripture is Mark chapter 4, verses 26 through 34. He also said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in, in its shade. With such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The word of God. O oh God, we gather today in your presence with expectation. Open our ears and our eyes to the presence of your Holy Spirit, and may the seeds of your word scattered among us this morning fall on fertile soil. In Christ's name, amen. So how many of you were exposed to American folk legends when you were little? Long stories told to inspire us. There was Paul Bunyan with his axe, John Henry with his hammer, Calamity Jane with her pistol, her rifle, and there's one unexpected hero in those legends who left a huge mark both inspirationally through the story of his life, but also in the real world. And the symbol of this hero of all things were seeds. The year is 1806, somewhere near Pittsburgh, and a man happens to look up and out on the Ohio River near his home. He sees a strange craft floating down the river. It's two canoes that have been, have been tied together. And the crew on this craft is an oddly dressed man wearing very simple threadbare clothes. And his coat is made of a coffee sack that has had the holes cut out for arms and a neck. The cargo on the ship, if you look closely, are racks to dry apple seeds. This is a real life person. His name is John Chapman, and he is the man behind the legend of Johnny Appleseed. John Chapman was born in Springfield, Massachusetts in the early days of the Revolutionary War. As a boy, he loved to roam the woods he was a lover of nature in all its forms. He studied the birds and the plants and the animals. And at night, he would lie back and gaze at the stars. And everything that he saw, in the flowers that he studied, in the brooks and the birds, he saw God's handwriting written among it all. The ruling passion of his adult life was to plant apple seeds. This is true. Seeds were the heart of his work. He collected them from other growers, from their apples, dried them as the story that we heard tells us. He didn't just wander around Pennsylvania and Ohio. No, he had a plan. He sowed his seeds to establish orchards. His nurseries of apple trees were usually located on moist land along the streams that he found. And he would plant these seeds, and then he would create 
a brush fence around them to protect them, and then he would wander off to plant elsewhere. He wouldn't need to return for quite some time. Why? Because the earth itself did the work of growing these little seeds into seedlings. And then eventually he would wander back and he would prune and care for the seedlings he grew. He planted where people were. He planted where the settlers of that time were going. And maybe you didn't know this, I didn't, but the seeds that he planted and the apples that he grew were not for eating. The apples were made for cider. Prior to indoor plumbing and sanitary, uh, sanitary water was hard to come by. It was difficult. It, it, it needed a lot of labor to make water clean. It was time consuming. And the people of that time, they needed to put their labor elsewhere. So for many members of the rural poor, it was prudent to simply produce alcoholic cider. They even allowed their children to drink it, which seems scandalous to us now. It was basically spiked apple cider. Johnny collected and sowed seeds. And once an apple seed grew into a young apple tree, a seedling, Johnny could sell that tree so that the people, the pioneers, could have their own home orchards. Johnny was contributing to the well-being of his neighbor and his early nation, one seed at a time. What I didn't know about Johnny Appleseed as well, John Chapman, was that he was deeply religious. He was a disciple of a man called Emanuel Swedenborg, a Christian, a Swedish scientist and theologian, and, and Emmanuel thought that he had had a revelation from Christ. And he wrote about his own inter interpretations and, and focus of his Christian faith. And this writing captivated John Chapman. Emmanuel Swedenborg preached that all living things, including plants and animals, were divine creations of God. That was his emphasis. This is why John Chapman lived an aesthetic life. He wasn't poor, as many of the legends tell. He did quite well with his orchards. But what he did was live simply, and as he wandered, he preached the gospel of Jesus Christ, and he refused to hurt any of God's creatures. It is said that he was a vegetarian, that he uh, spoke out for animal welfare. There's even a little legend that claims that he, he, was, he angrily threw out his shoes. He's known to walk around barefooted. That he threw out his shoes because he accidentally stepped on a worm. He was a lover of nature, of God's creation. And his faith had an interesting real-world application. You see, some growers of apples, they used the technique of grafting. You would put in the time and effort to grow an apple tree. And then rather than try to grow a whole new orchard, you would leave the root of the old apple tree and graft a new seedling onto it. And then it would flourish. Johnny Appleseed, because of his religious interpretation, he saw grafting as interfering and harming nature. So he didn't like that practice. What happened with grafting was that the, the DNA of the mother tree would extend into the new tree. So new forms of apple trees would not come into being. By using seeds and planting them, Chapman allowed these apple trees to adapt and thrive in the new world. And Chapman contributed to the development of hundreds of new apple varieties in the United States. And I think there's some controversy about which ones we can say um, go back to Johnny Appleseed. Um, Red Delicious was one that I read. So now every time that I go into the grocery store, I will think, of Johnny Appleseed. Now as 
John Chapman traveled with his seeds. He sometimes sought shelter in the homes of pioneers. And he, he was offered a meal of, of bread and milk for his supper. And before he retired, he was known to offer to lead worship. He would read from scripture, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And then he prayed and he spoke about the God that he saw in creation. And his words had a deep impression on all who heard him. Another kind of seed that he planted as he traveled. Seeds of faith. He became well known even while he was alive. Because he was seen as a kind and generous and somewhat interesting character. He truly was Johnny Appleseed, planting all these different kinds of seeds throughout his lifetime. And what strikes me about John Chapman and why I share his, his story today is that he really was interested in seeds, not apples. What do I mean? A typical grower finds the right field, puts in the labor, sows their crop, and then frets in good and bad weather for their harvest. But that's not what Johnny Appleseed was interested in. He found meaning in planting the seeds, and then he trusted God, his creator, to do the work of the growing. He trusted that God was always at work, letting life grow up and thrive around us. Johnny knew a secret. When he planted his seeds and trusted God, to do the work, good would come. I think we can learn from Johnny Appleseed, especially if we reflect on the scripture that we heard today. We heard a parable, a teaching illustration that Jesus offered that tries to give us an image of the kingdom of God. A person scatters seeds. Scatters, that's what scripture says, not plants scatters and then they head off to dinner in bed and they just leave the seeds and the seeds they sprout and they grow and the grower has no idea how that happens the earth the goodness of the earth does the work without any help first the stem and then the bud and then the ripened grain So what are the seeds in this story? Who are we in this story, in this parable? And what good news does this lesson offer us for our lives and our souls? Seeds are an amazing thing if you think about them. A kernel of corn, a grain of wheat, a mustard seed. Each and every seed contains instructions on how to produce life. And not only that, the seed has instructions for its own growth, but also instructions for the growth of future generations. A seed is a brimming bundle of potential. So seeds in God's realm, in the kingdom of God, are brimming bundles of potential gifts from God. Faith, hope, love. When I hear Jesus tell this tale, I think that we should see ourselves as Johnny Appleseeds. This is what I mean. In the kingdom of God, God's love sprouts everywhere. It's like a jungle of love. God provides the brimming bundles, the seeds of all that is good, and the spirit of God waters and warms that which is good, and it blooms and it bears fruit. Goodness abounds. Life is abundant. Jesus tells us this parable so that we can catch a glimpse of that, of what our life can be like. Not fretting over how we make the seeds come to life, but trusting in God. Certainly the kingdom of God is a dream of what heaven is like. 
a life of abundance, of love blooming, of the spirit of God present. We know that we celebrate that Nancy Wilson now rests in the beauty of God's orchard, along with Gladys Milheim and George Owens and Warren Frankenfield. Jesus gives us this image of the life to come that is so abundant, that is just given to us. Jesus wants us to trust in this future. But I think Jesus also preached again and again about the kingdom of God because we weren't just to focus on the life to come, but on the nearness of the kingdom of God now, because that's what Jesus preached. The kingdom of God is near. The good news for today is that God has gathered up seeds of all that is good, of love and peace and hope, and scattered them into our lives now. Because the kingdom of God is now. And if we read this parable, I think we are called to be the folks that scatter those seeds. Imagine if John Chapman collected his seeds, created his orchard, and then built a wall about the trees, and just kept the trees and the apples for himself. Most of what grew year after year would rot on the vine because those seeds and the fruit was meant to be shared, as he did. The seeds are the heart of the story, and seeds are meant to be scattered, to to be given out, to be put out into the world. And when we receive seeds, we are called to share them with the world. Friends, I know it has been a tough season, but I believe that God, over the last I don't know, 18 months, has never stopped creating seeds. The potential for God's grace to burst up and fulfill and full our lives is here. The seeds are there. In your individual life, in your life, the potential of goodness is there, as it is in the life of this church. God has not stopped creating those brimming bundles of goodness. But we have to be ready to gather them in and then to scatter them. God is ready to do something new in your life and in mine, to fill us with faith and hope and love. Life in all its richness is eager to blossom. Are we ready for it? Amen. I miss not being able to have uh, our anthem this morning, so I hope that you will include Elizabeth in your prayers. We know that you will be back next Sunday. Today I wanted to offer you a prayer. Um, It is considered a contemporary Welsh prayer. Will you join your hearts with mine? Lord, We would grow with you, new shoots reaching out, hands stretched upward like leaves newly formed, soaking up your light and warmth. Lord, we pray that we will grow with you. Lord, we would grow with you in sunshine and rain, in darkness and in light, in cold days and summer days, from springtime to winter, O Lord, that we would grow with you. 
Lord, we would grow with you and bring forth fruit that is pleasing to you, fed by your living waters, giving sustenance to others. Lord, we would grow with you. Holy Spirit, move through us. Help us to grow with you. And in this time of silent prayer, gather in the seeds of our prayers, our hopes and our fears, our well wishes for others, our vision for the world where your kingdom unfolds in all its fullness. In silent now we pray. And let God's people pray the prayer that Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God is indeed generous, fills our life with such good things. We pause now to return to God the blessings that God has offered to us. If you have given, thank you. If you are willing to give today, thank you. God is good, and for God's goodness we give thanks. Amen. And now I send you forth with these words. May the God of hope fill you with all the joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Alleluia. Amen.